Why does everything I like on Instagram have a price listed as POA? I'm not gonna ask what the price is. I obviously can't afford it. So I love this frame, but I'm going to have to figure out a way to make it myself. Okay, I have managed to find the price on the web version. It's $2,100. And now for that price, it does include the artwork, but I don't want that artwork. And it's still expensive, so I'm gonna make it myself. In order to figure out how to do this, I need to break it down into a few components. So I know I already have the mechanism of a frame sorted because I've got this Ikea one that I'm going to use as a base. I really like the art in it. My sister drew this and I stole it off her. She's not getting it back. I stole it out of her workbook and slapped it in this frame so that she couldn't take it home with her that day. And then I've never actually done anything properly to it. So I think that this specific art would look really good in this frame that I want. And so I might as well start off with this as a base, this artwork and this frame that's not looking good right now, but it's a starting point. What I wanna do is create something decorative to sit on top of this frame. So I know the artwork would be in there safely and just have my decorative elements on top of it. Let's have a little bit of a look up close to see what it needs to be. You can see that it's actually in two parts. There is the first section that is completely flat. The second section is actually angled, which gives the frame an interesting dimension, but that's gonna be a little bit hard to figure out how to do that. So what I'm thinking is creating essentially two frames, a flat one and then that second gradient one, and then placing them together when it's done. I especially like this gradient part of the frame. I think it's the whole thing that makes it really interesting because I've seen woven frames before and they're fine, they're nice, that's fine, but it's that second one that has the slope in it that really starts to make it look substantial and solid and grand and have a lot of impact. So I know it's really important that I do that part and I know that that's gonna be the challenge of this. Like, how can I make that, you know? So first step is creating the shape for the frame. I've tried a bunch of different approaches for this and I think honestly, any of them could work just depending on what you have available and what tools you have and stuff like that. And I suppose it also depends on the size of the frame that you want to create. I tried making a little right angle with wood trim and I also tried just with one single piece of wood trim to act as the corner. That was a bit of a flatter one. And I even tried doing it with cardboard and I think that totally works as well. In the end, it really just came down to my preference and I just really dislike cutting cardboard. I've done enough cardboard projects, you know? So for the wood, I tried using mitre shears. I've never used them before and I don't know if the ones that I got are really bad quality or something, but it was really hard and I had to get Perry to help me. And even then it was just quite unenjoyable to cut, I would say. So once I had the wood, I needed to think about the string that was going to be wrapped around the frame. I didn't want something too neat and tidy, so I ended up choosing this raffia straw. I'll leave this exact one linked below. I found hot glue worked really well, and when I first started it, I was doing one piece of straw at a time. But as I progressed, I found that three was really the perfect number because it was a lot quicker and just a little bit more rustic and messy. Like, I didn't want it looking super neat. But hang on a minute. Stop. I really should make a smaller version of this first because I don't actually know how I'm gonna finish it. I wanna have a smaller one just to make sure that I'm figuring out any of the problems that might come up, you know? I decided to make a frame for this little artwork that I've been doing. Now, funnily enough, this little artwork is a sample for a bigger artwork that I'm working on right now. So make sure you subscribe if you wanna see how that turns out. I thought, how cute, I can match up the sample frame and the sample artwork and make them go together. So I made this one in a little bit of a different way. I actually made the gradient go down from the artwork just for something different because I knew this was just a tiny little sample, you know? I wrapped it in the straw using the hot glue gun again and then I actually tested out just simply painting the straw with brown paint. And I was really happy with how this looked. I think you could do more layers if you wanted it to be more of a solid colour. But I kind of like it looking imperfect. Now this is the part where I was very glad that I was doing a sample because I had a bit of a disaster when I put the two frames together. I should have really thought this through but basically because there was all this straw on them they didn't fit together as well and so lesson learned you want to do it bit by bit. You want to make the entire first frame and cover it with straw and then do the measurements for the outer layer.
I had been thinking that the outer frame I had made for this was too thin anyway, so I took it as a sign and I decided to do something a lot more grand. So I just used these pieces of corner cardboard that I had because they were already basically the right size. I wasn't too bothered about measuring it perfectly because the straw does fill it out and it's all going to be very forgiving. After taping the cardboard together, I then wrapped it in the straw exactly like how I did the first layer and then I painted it. So this is where we're at now. I have made the inner frame and the outer frame. It's a bit wobbly, I need to secure it. The next thing I need to do is the braids. And I've tested with all three of the types of string. They all look a bit different and have their own personality, but I ended up choosing to use a mixture of the regular twine and the straw. And I literally just did some braids and had a bit of a play around with it to get it to a place where I felt right. Now I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous about using hot glue here because it's just so unforgiving and if I made a mistake it was going to ruin the straw that I had wrapped around and it'd just be so hard. But I do think it was the best way to do it so I was just really, really careful about placing it perfectly. On the original the braids were also along the top and the bottom that you could see from the side profile and I really like that look so I added them on there as well. And then I painted it. I had to use a different paint and so I ended up doing a second coat over the entire thing and I really like the way it turned out actually. Now looking at this little sample frame and sample artwork together, I was so happy with how this turned out and it got me really excited for the bigger one. Now perfect timing, my package arrived for the mount that I got. I ordered a custom one that was the perfect size for the frame and the artwork so that it was going to look intentional and just put together. What a difference that makes, just having this with a proper mount and properly put in this frame. This artwork is already looking better, but it's time to continue with the frame. So where were we? I had managed to do both of the frames for this, and when I put it all together on top of the artwork, it was starting to look good, but I had a bit of a problem. Do you know what I've just realized? I want it to be thicker. I want the inside to be thicker, but then if I make the inside thicker, I need a different outside because the outside is made with the measurements of the thinner thing. Oh, I know it's a bit of a pain, but like, I've just got to do it. And I want the gradient to be bigger as well. Like this one just isn't substantial enough. It looks cool, but I'm not happy with it. So we're going to start again. Let's talk about my method for how I'm making this big one after all this testing. I've found that using little corners like this of wood and gluing them with wood glue makes this really sturdy. The first one that I made, I tried glue and staples and all sorts of things, and it just it wasn't as sturdy as this. This is perfectly fine. The straw comes in an annoying bundle, and so what I recommend you do is you put it in some kind of big pot or vessel. You just find the piece that you want, and then pull it out, and that gives you one long piece ready to go. So I'll use three of these and then hot glue them onto the frame and then start wrapping it. And then you just hot glue at the end as well. You generally can't see the hot glue anyway, but I think it's worth trying to keep as much of it on the back just in case so that the front looks good. Now that brings me though to the corners. The corners are harder to do. Now you might have noticed in my first one, I just like wrapped it around. And in the original, they go in a different direction. So I thought, should I just test that out for this? So I started wrapping it. It's quite hard to do the corner. So I found that the best way is actually doing a couple of strands at a time, two or three again, exactly like here, but just snipping them shorter and then gluing them either side. So these aren't wrapping around, they're just glued. I'm like, this looks so messy at the back, but it doesn't matter when you see it from the front. I made sure that the strands were a little bit long so that there was some excess that I could fold over and seal with hot glue. I used this little triangle of scrap wood to just press it down until it had started to set in place. So then it was time to finish up the second frame and I needed to put the pieces together. Much like the first one, I just used some wood glue and some scrap corner pieces of wood and just used a few things I had to weigh them down while they dried. And once it was dry, I added those corner pieces, being careful to make sure that I kept them at a 45 degree angle so that it looked really neat and tidy. And then it was time to paint the frames. So I've put the 
framed together in two different ways and I've decided that I like it better putting the outside one down first and then laying the inside one sort of on top of it so it's a little bit raised. I think it looks neater that way so I'm gonna go with that. Next step is adding that string detail in between the two frames and then on the outside and then on the outside at the bottom as I did with the test. In the test one I did, I just used the twine braided but it's too thin on this one. So I needed something thicker. So I've got two options. One is I can use the flat twine, which definitely is a thicker braid and looks quite nice. I think it could work. And then the other option, which is also closer to the original one, is three braids of the thinner twine, then braided together. So each strand of this braids are braids. I'm leaning towards this one. Of course, it's the harder one that I'm leaning towards. I just think no matter how hard you try, the braids are a little bit messy looking. And I know that it, it's imperfect and everything, but I just think that when you braid together, it starts to look like the right mixture between messy and rustic, but also cohesive. So I think this is what I'll end up going for. One thing I haven't talked about yet is those little circles in the corners that the original has. I haven't decided yet if I wanna do them, I think, not, but maybe I will. I'll make that decision at the end. But in the meantime, I have some good news. I've been talking about this project with Liv and she's interested in getting this artwork back, but I'm not giving it to her, but I've done a deal with her. I've finally convinced her to open an Etsy store with her art. She does the most beautiful art. I've been trying to convince her to do this for so long. So I did a deal. I will get this scanned in and I will give you the digital file of it if you promise to finally open an Etsy store. And so she's done it. So if you like this artwork and you'd like to get a copy of it, I will leave a link below to her Etsy store and I've got a promo code for it as well. So you can get a discount. So if you like it, go and buy it to support her so that she can start to put more of her art on there because it's so nice and she just should be selling her art, you know? But back to this project, as I get closer and closer to the finish line, I'm thinking more and more about where am I going to actually put this? So my plan was to put it here at the entryway. I've removed the artwork that was there and I've put it here. It looks bad, just pretend you're not looking at that. But my plan was to put it there. They started looking at this spot and I really overlooked this a lot because there's an ugly radiator and it's just a bit of a weird spot. But I've been thinking, what if I covered up this radiator and found a way to like remove it from my life? Didn't think much of it, but then I went on Facebook Marketplace and I've seen something. I've seen this oak paneling. There's only two pieces. I don't know who could use it for what. If there was a bunch, you could use it for a room, but there's only two pieces, unless you were replacing them and had exactly the same ones or something. But I measured it. The bigger piece is the perfect size to go across this radiator. And I would only need to do a small little bit of work on the side to secure it. But imagine if I got oak paneling there, something across the top, whatever, and then I put this artwork there. It could become like a nice little thing instead of an eyesore. Now I wasn't sure about it, but I got a notification yesterday that the price has been reduced. I can't decide whether I should do it or not. So comment below if you think I should get it, or if you've got any ideas about what I should do here to just rectify how ugly this is. But should I get it? And then what would I put on top? I think I'd have to do something that still lets the heat come out. But there are solutions for that. And I could put that there and the oak and then the artwork could look good. So while I had a think about that, it was time to get back to putting the string onto the frame. 